Antoine Louis Claude Destut, Comte de Tracy French, de Tassi, the 20th of July 1754 to the 9th of March 1836, was a French Enlightenment aristocrat and philosopher who coined the term ideology. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> The son of a distinguished soldier, Claude Destut, he was born in Paris. His family was of Scottish descent, tracing its origin to Walter Stutt, who in 1420 had accompanied the Earls of Buchan and Douglas to the court of France, and whose family afterwards rose to be Counts of Tracy. He was educated at home and at the University of Strasbourg, where he was noted for his athletic skill. He went into the army, and when the French Revolution broke out, he took an active part in the Provincial Assembly of Bourbonus. Elected a deputy of the nobility to the States General, he sat alongside his friend, the Marquis de la Fayette. In the spring of 1792, he received the rank of Maréchal de Camp in command of the cavalry in the Army of the North, but the influence of the extremists becoming predominant he took indefinite leave of absence, and settled at Otoy, where, with Condorcet and Cabanis, he devoted himself to scientific studies. Under the Reign of Terror, he was arrested and imprisoned for nearly a year, during which he studied Condillac and Locke, and abandoned the natural sciences for philosophy. In 1795, he was named associate of the Institut de France. This was the year when when the institute was established. On the motion of Cabanis, he was named in the class of the moral and political sciences. He soon began to attract attention by the memoirs which he read before his colleagues—papers which formed the first draft of his comprehensive work on ideology, named Elements de Deologie. He conceived of ideology as the «science of ideas», the society of «ideologists». At Otoy embraced, besides Cabanis and Tracy, Constantine Francois de Chassebuff, Comte de Volny, and Dominique Joseph Garat, professor in the National Institute. Along with some of these colleagues, he was a member of the cultural society Les Neuf Sirs. Under the Empire, Tracy was a member of the Senate, but took little part in its deliberations. Under the Restoration, he became a peer of France, but protested against the reactionary split of the government, and remained in opposition. In 1808, he was elected a member of the Académie Française in place of Cabanis, and in 1832, he was also named a member of the Academy of Moral Sciences on its reorganization. He appeared, however, only once at its conferences, owing to his age and to disappointment at the comparative failure of his work. Destut de Tracy was one of the principal advocates of liberalism during and after the Revolution. He died in Paris. Topic. Philosophy Destut de Tracy was the last eminent representative of the sensualistic school which Condillac founded in France upon a one-sided interpretation of Locke. In full agreement with the materialist views of Cabanis, de Tracy pushed the sensualist principles of Condillac to their most necessary consequences. While the attention of Cabanis was devoted mostly to the physiological side of man, Trassus' interests concerned the then newly determined ideological, in contrast to psychological, sides of humanity. His grounding notion of ideology, he frankly stated, fell as a part of zoology, biology. The four faculties into which de Tracy divides the conscious life perception, memory, judgment, volition are all varieties of sensation. Perception is sensation caused by a present affection of the external extremities of the nerves, memory is sensation caused, in the absence of present excitation, by dispositions of the nerves which are the result of past experiences, judgment is the perception of relations between sensations, and is itself a species of sensation, because if we are aware of the sensations we must be aware also of the relations between them, and volition he identifies with the feeling of desire, and is therefore included as a type of sensation, considered for the influences of his philosophy, de Tracy minimally deserves credit for his distinction between active and passive touch, which ultimately fed the development of psychological theories of muscular sense. His account of the notion of external existence, as it derived not from pure sensation, but from the experience of action on the one hand and resistance on the other, stands in this light to be compared with the works of Alexander Bain and later psychologists. Works. <laughs> <laughs> His chief works are the five-volume Elements de Deologie 1817 the first volume of which was presented as «Ideology strictly defined» 
and which completed the arguments made in earlier completed monographs, Commentaire sur l'esprit des Lois de Montesquieu 1806, and Essay sur la Génie, et les ouvrages de Montesquieu 1808. The fourth volume of the Elements de Deologie the author regarded as the introduction to a second section of the planned nine-part work, which he titled Traité de la Volonté Treatise on the Will and its Effects. When translated into English, editor Thomas Jefferson retitled the volume A Treatise on Political Economy, which obscured the aspects of Trass's concern not with politics, but with far more basic questions of will, and the possibility of understanding the conditions of its determinations. <laughs> Legacy Tracy advanced a rigorous use of deductive method in social theory, seeing economics in terms of actions praxeology and exchanges catalactics. Trass's influence can be seen both on the continent, particularly on Stendhal, Augustin Thierry, Auguste Comte, and Charles Dunoyer, and in America, where the general approach of the French liberal school of political economy competed evenly with British classical political economy well until the end of the 19th century, as evidence in the work and reputation of Arthur Latham Perry and others. In his political writings, Tracy rejected monarchism, favoring the American Republican form of government. This republicanism, as well as his advocacy of reason in philosophy and laissez-faire for economic policy, lost him favor with Napoleon, who turned Trass's coinage of ideology into a term of abuse. Karl Marx followed this vein of invective to refer to Tracy as a fish-blooded bourgeois doctrinaire, a fish-blooded bourgeois doctrinaire. Thomas Jefferson, on the other hand, thought highly enough of Destut de Trassis' work to ready two of his manuscripts for American publication. In his preface to the 1817 publication, Jefferson wrote, "...by diffusing sound principles of political economy, it will protect the public industry from the parasite institutions now consuming it." Trass's criticism of Montesquieu and his endorsement of representative democracy were influential on Jefferson's thinking. Stendhal was much influenced by de Trass's Enlightenment ideals, and attended the de Tracy Salon regularly, in the 1820s, as he described in Memoirs of an Egotist. Destut de Tracy was important to the liberals of the 1820s. Richard Stites writes Franco Venturi noted that the commentary resounded throughout the whole period of the liberal revolutions, from the Spain of 1820 to the Russia of 1825." An American historian wrote that, "...the Russian Decembrists, along with numerous other liberals, Carbonari, and revolutionaries of the 1820s used this commentary as their political Bible." The Decembrist Mikhail Orlov recalled that his circle considered it the epitome of wisdom. His legacy left lessons for coming generations. See also Victor Destut de Tracy, his son